Developer Acquire is continuing their dive into self-publishing with the release of Cards RPG The Misty Battlefield. And similar to titles like Ancient Weapon Holly, what we have here is a surface level offering of an SRPG adventure that never manages to stretch outside of the core systems. While the presentation offers a surprisingly decent layer of quality to the whole package, the overall game mechanics never seem to capture my attention. <laughs> Cards RPG The Misty Battlefield is labeled as a roguelike, but its roguelike systems are pretty much tied to losing progress on the current map, which I don't think is very punishing. Thankfully, I appreciated this because the game loop can be rather repetitive and replaying from the beginning of the game in the event that I get wiped out would really suck. However, each map does have a reset on your party's base stats, which can be improved through upgrades earned through level ups. This is needed if only to deal with the high difficulty spikes in the later chapters. But whether you will see that or not depends on how willing you are to put up with an average playing experience. The opening of Cards RPG The Misty Battlefield presents a decent introduction to the setting, but it fails to do anything with its cast. Following the opening of some battles, you won't know much about the mission or objective of each act. To describe this better, it would be to say that after you finish a mission, the following screen is just another map with very little preamble about why you're even there or what comes next. Your party gets more details on the Steam page than in the actual game, and you're never really sure why you're fighting any of the stage bosses, but they are the objective. This was probably the biggest letdown because the characters have designs that make them appear to be interesting at a glance, but they slowly lose any semblance of depth. When deployed on the battlefield, mist hinders visibility in the area. It's a feature, but I don't really understand the full extent of it. You aren't rewarded for clearing the mist, which can be done by traversing the map or inspecting facilities, but all it really does is reveal enemies and items that are already outlined within the mist. Anyway, before we get into the actual combat, let's just talk about navigating the map. During the player's turn, they can move to various spaces on a grid, some containing treasure or small towns that allow you to choose one of three card options or discard cards. The interesting thing that I found about these chests is how if you don't equip the item found as soon as you open it, you'll lose the item. I don't know if this is a bug or not, but every time I checked my inventory, even after receiving items, they were gone. However, if you equip the item before your turn ends, right after you picked it up, you'll be able to equip it? Uh, I really hope this is fixed. Anyway, on to combat. When you encounter an enemy, you'll have three to five turns to take actions utilizing your deck of cards. Each character shares the same deck, which is another significant oversight considering there are cards treated specifically for defense tanks or ranged units. The option to create specific decks designed around each character would have encouraged strategic utilization of cards effects. But as it stands, you're pretty much just rolling with whatever you're given, which makes each encounter very repetitive, given that you're pretty much doing the same strategy for every encounter. Cards allow you to attack or defend, and they each require action points to use. There are even some cards that don't require any action points, as they offer buffs to base stats for a number of turns or lower the stats of your enemy for a number of turns. There are some pretty cool combinations of cards that could be strung together, but you won't really find these until late game acts when more cards are available. Strangely, they make you discard a total of three cards after each round, but I'm not really sure why. And there's also a 15 card minimum that seems to randomly remove cards regardless of which cards you choose. I honestly tried to understand what the system was for, but it's there and it's required for each quest, so I just went along with it. The game loop becomes monotonous as you progress. It's all simple to understand, but nothing will strike you as unique or better than any other SRPG or deck building game that you've played before. For starters, the blending of genres doesn't really work when you can't create decks for specific characters. Further progression is mainly tied to base stat upgrade unlocks as you gain strategic levels, which I would say are required to get through a few random difficulty spikes. There's no permadeath for characters and the narrative never goes anywhere. I kept playing if only as a personal protest to not be defeated by a game that I feel naturally wants you to complete it over a weekend. 
As an entry level SRPG, this could be a great introduction to the overall game loop of the genre, but it sadly doesn't present anything outside of typical, and there are some much needed quality of life improvements, which we might not even see. Cards RPG The Misty Battlefield sets the field up for what you'd expect to be an epic SRPG adventure, but it really stumbles on execution. Similar to the team's previous self-published titles, the experience comes across as if those working on this game are attempting to develop within genres and gameplay systems that they aren't very well versed in. The result is a surface level SRPG experience with a rather dull deck building mechanic all tied together with the expectation of upgrading your units through repetitive fights under the guise of being a roguelike, which it is not. It's playable and visually striking, but very little will keep you invested. Noisy Pixel is giving cards RPG The Misty Battlefield a 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixels run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy Pixel.